So, recently I've been looking at all my old fantasy armies and things again. Oh, well, my old fantasy army, uh, the one I've still got, uh, which are my high elves. And um, decided to have a look at Kings of War. So, this was uh, going cheap on eBay. It's only, um, I think it was about 16 or 17 pounds or something like that. And it's the, uh, the hardback Kings of War version 2 rulebook. Um, so, in there, got the the full background to the game, uh, the full rules, um, all the spells, magical artifacts, all that stuff, scenarios, and all the full fleshed out army lists in there as well. Um, so I thought I'd have a look at it, um, and to be honest, I'll, I'm quite impressed. We'll have a look at this shortly. Uh, so I went into my local game shop down in Hull, and they had this. Um, and they were having a like a, a clearance sale of all the Mantic stuff and all the Kings of War stuff. And I believe this is the old the old army set. Um, I think the newer army set has got a different composition to this. It's got different models in it. Uh, but this one, I grabbed it for £15 for all these miniatures. So there's uh, 20 axe, axe armed orcs there, 20 great axe orcs. Um, Ten Gore Riders, three Chariots, and then these little Orkling things, little Snotling type things as well. Um, so we'll have a look at that as well. Um, I have I had a look at it. Um, I wanted to do like a proper unboxing, but I just had to dig into it and have a look. So I was curious. Um, so we'll have a look at the rule book, uh, and then we'll, we'll have a look at the miniatures. Okay then, so the rule book itself then. Um, as I said there, Hardback, um, it's full colour, it's really nice actually, it's a nice feel to it and stuff. Um, yeah, it's nice. Made by, uh, produced by Mantic Games in the UK. Um, search for those online, you can find them, Mantic Games. Um, I think it's owned by a load of ex Games Workshop employees. Um, but yeah. Let's have a look inside then. So, written by Alessio uh, Cavatori. Oh, yeah, Cav, Cavatori, Cavator, Cavatori. I don't know. Cavatori. He's Italian. Um, forward there by Rick Priestley, who obviously uh, now works for Warlord Games. Wrote Black Powder, um, Hail Caesar, the original Warhammer 40,000, and Warhammer. Um, yeah, so forward from him. Uh, and we're going to an introduction there. Contents page, all the credits, uh, and then we're on to the, the narrative or the background kind of fluff kind of thing. I don't like calling it fluff, it's like a it's like the the world that it's all set in, isn't it? So it's the history of Mantica. Um I'll just quick flip through this, but there's lots of nice artwork and stuff in there. Quite like these, these kind of line line drawings it reminds me of the old the old Warhammer Army books. Um, that I've still got. Um, yes, yeah, so I've really fleshed out the the background to the whole Mantica world, and there's the map there. Um, I think when it was first released, this is second edition. It was very bare bones. Um, <clears throat> it was more about getting a load of models, get them on the table, roll some dice, have a game. Um, but they fleshed it out quite a lot, which is pretty cool to be honest. It's got its own setting. It's not just. Uh, carbon copy of Warhammer or anything like that. It's its own thing, very much its own thing, so it's good. <coughs> um, some of the models there. Let's quickly flip through this. Some models and stuff. Yeah. And you can see it's really nicely produced. Nice artwork. Photographs of the of the minis and all that sort of stuff. Lots of nice um, little background stories. It's cool. If you're into your fantasy gaming, I um, recommend having a look at it if you haven't already. It's been out for a while, so... The rules. Um, I have had a quick skim through the rules. I haven't read them fully yet. Um, I only got it the other day. I've been at work, unfortunately. Um, so, breaks down. Um, the different types of units. So you've got infantry, cavalry, large infantry and large cavalry, so you kind of monstrous mounts and stuff, war engines, monsters, um, heroes can be either 
heroes on monsters or heroes, uh, infantry heroes or cavalry heroes. It goes on about base sizes. Because each unit is just mounted on one base. Um, well, you don't have to have it on one base, but they're, they're a set size. So a troop of infantry, for example, is 100 by 40 millimeters. Um, stuff like that. So all, all the base sizes are there. Um, so it kind of encourages the. It's very similar to imp impetus in that way that in, you can do like these diorama type bases. You know, you don't have to. I'm not going to because I'm planning on using my stuff for Warhammer as well. So I'll just keep them separate, put them in a movement tray. Uh, just about uh, the arc of sight, line of sight, measuring distances, all the different stats for the units. For example, there, kindred archers. Um, going into the turn itself. Movement, and charge rules, going on to terrain, shooting, it's all dead simple as well. Um, damaging the target, testing the nerve, um, melee, again damaging the target. Um, so the shooting and the melee work very, very similarly. Um, regrouping, nerve test and how to test, when to test. What the different terms mean, so steady troops, wavering or routing, um, so a couple of exceptions. Um, onto War Engines, just one, one little page of War Engine rules, that's it, um, which is nice, nice and simple. Uh, you can get on playing the game and uh, trying to outwit your opponent rather than having your head stuck in a rule book for most of the game, which we've all been there, I'm sure. Individuals. Uh, some special rules for different types of stuff. So you've got big shields and blasts and brutal troops, fury, um, inspiring leaders and stuff, as an example. Um, other things, some weapons might take time to reload. Um, some troops are yellow-bellied. Um, so uh, stuff like goblins. Um, they'll only attack you if they outnumber you and things. Um, how to pick a force. Uh, allies and alignments, um, all the different mag magical artifacts you can take, and they're, they're all kind of generic uh, across all the armies. So each individual faction doesn't have its own set of um, magical items and stuff. Um, so it's quite simple in that way. Um, spells again, generic list of spells. Uh, all armies use them. Um, Onto scenarios, I think I believe there's the six different scenarios there. So there's kill, invade, dominate, pillage, loot, uh, and kill and pillage. So all these um, scenarios got their own um, victory conditions and things, uh, which makes it interesting. Uh, some more there. Time games for tournaments and things. So using chess clocks and timers and, and stuff like that. I won't be doing that. Um, force lists. And most of the book, actually, in fact, a good half of the book is all the army lists. So there's no need to go out and buy codex type um, army list books. It's all just in here. So you've got the forces of Basilia, which is like a human faction. Um, if you flip through those, you've got all your different options there. Um, dwarfs, or dwarves. Um, Again, pretty cool. They look like they're riding big badgers. It's kind of weird. Um, dwarfs again. Elves. One I'm more interested in, I think. Because I've, obviously I've got my high elf army. Most of it translates across um, to Kings of War. Um, some special characters and stuff for the elves there. A few more. The kingdoms of men. This is where you can start using your historical figures. I think there's like Teutonic Knights and things on there in that picture. You've got some, I think there might be War Games Factory, uh, Foundry, sorry, or maybe Gripping Beast, um, Viking Dark Age types there that you could use. Um, yeah. You can make your own like little factions. So if you wanted to do something like um, Game of Thrones or something, you could easily use this. Um, some more, it's like Celts there. More crusading types. 
Um, yeah. So, the humans there, forces in nature, kind of like wood elves and like forest sprites and all that kind of, and like these centaur things and stuff. All very strange. Um, pretty cool though. Ogres, which are really cool. If they were, if they'd have had an ogre army at that shop, I would have bought that. But seeing as they had that that orc army there for fifteen quid, I had to go. With, well, couldn't resist that. I could just go for it. Um, ogres, more ogres. Pretty cool. Forces of the abyss. These are quite cool as well. I was tempted by these. They're like kind of demons. Um, pretty awesome. Really nice models actually. Um, well, we'll see when I open the box. Um, see what you think. <clears throat> Abyssal dwarfs, like chaos dwarfs kind of thing. Pretty good. What else have we got? Goblin armies. Um, let's quickly flip through this. And then we've got orcs. So we've got goblins and the orcs are both separate armies. I suppose you could have them allied together pretty easy, no dramas. Uh, undead. Um, yeah, so it's got all your fantasy kind of staple armies, hasn't it, really? A bit of an advert there on the back. A few modelling notes, how you can uh, assemble your units and stuff like that. So that's the book. It's quite heavy. <laughs> uh, I'm quite impressed with it. I think it's a really nice book. Um, it's going to be worth having a couple of games of, I think, to see what it's like. Um, but I'll get back to you about that. What I'll do now then is have a quick look at the figures. Okay then, so the actual army box itself then. Um, like I said, I think this is um, the older, the older army box that came out a few years ago. The new, the newer box, I believe. Um, it actually, it has the same two units uh, of orc warriors in there. But instead of having the Gore Riders and the Chariots, it has two units of Trolls. And it also has a metal uh, general figure in it as well. Uh, and I think that retails about 59 quid um, from Mantic. Um, but you can get it a fair bit cheaper, um, obviously, from, a, from an online retailer. So this box here... Um, I think when it first came out it was about 50 quid or something like that. So for all those models, I think 50 quid is a pretty good deal to be honest. Um, however, I got it in a sale for £15. So for about less than the price of one Games Workshop uh, Space Marine model. Um, I've got this entire army. Um, so let's have a look at them then. I've opened it, I've already had a look. Um, so. Um, because I just couldn't wait to get get in amongst it. So it's quite strange in the way that it comes in. A lot of the parts come in these little bags. Um, I believe this is the Gore Riders in there. I'll put that down there. Um, a chariot. Another chariot. And another chariot. So you've got the three chariots there. Pop this back so you can see these. Um, and then we have got, oh god, loads of sprues. Where was that here? So, got eight. Right, what I'll do is I'll show you the, in fact, we'll sh I'll show you these a bit closer after. But basically, in that box, there's tons of plastic. You've got all the bases in there. Um, these ones for the Gore Riders. Um, ones for the infantry and stuff like that and there's just there's tons of sprues in there I'm not going to pull them all out right now um, what we'll do is we'll have a quick look at the chariots and the gore riders first and then we'll have a look at the sprues okay then so chariot I'm not quite sure what these are made out of I've opened one already which I'll show you in a minute but if I can just get into this the world's sharpest nail scissors. Oh, God. Um, right. So this is one of the chariots. It comes in a load of bits. Um, 
And as you can see, parts of it are quite bent. Um, there's a fair little bit of detail on there. I'm sorry it's so dark. It's that's because I've got a white background today. Um, there's a fair bit of detail on there. Um, it does say on the box that they're plastic, but I'm thinking it's some kind of resin. I don't know what it is. It's quite weird material it's made out of. Um, into the side of that bit there. Now, these bits here, you can see it's all bent. It's kind of, kind of warped a bit. Um, the wheels themselves are slightly, they're not quite straight. Um, it's actually not as bad on this one as it was on the other. But, um, hmm. I mean, the detail on that's there, but I think it's some kind of resin. Um, is it this Restic that I've heard of? It's like some kind of weird mixture of plastic and resin. Um, but yeah, uh, the bores themselves come in two parts, two two parts for the body, uh, and then you've got all the, the little bits there. So you've got the bottom of the jaw, um, the heads are separate, uh, you put the jaw bit in, and, uh, and stuff like that as well. There's quite a few parts there just for the uh, for the chariots. Um, we'll get one built uh, eventually and see what it looks like. But the one I I opened before was really warped. So what I did was I put them in a put all the bits in a cup of hot water, left them for a couple of minutes, and then straighten them out. So hopefully you can see the difference there. So if that looks really dark, it's starting to frustrate me a little bit. If I'm honest, um, yeah. So just by sticking them in some water, you can get them nice and straight, uh, straighten all the bits out, straighten all these bits out as well, uh, and it seems to work okay. I'm quite happy with the detail on them, um, but we'll have to see what they look like when they're, when they're built. So that's the chariots, so there's three of those. Um, interestingly, there's no, the riders don't come with the chariots. I'm not quite sure where the, where the riders are supposed to come from, or whether... They come as part of the um, the gore riders. Maybe there's a couple of guys in in that bag, or they might just be on the sprues. Um, and it's worth mentioning: there's absolutely no instructions whatsoever in this box. Um, there's no paperwork in there, no no instructions or anything like that. And it was still in its shrink wrap when I got it, um, so it's not like someone's gone in there and, and taken them out. Um, yeah, so there's no instructions at all. Uh, there might be a line or something. I need to have a look, but. I think I can work out how to put stuff together. It's just it'd be nice to have a little booklet in there of some kind. I think. So yeah, there's a there's a chariot. So anyway, so there's three of them. And then we'll have a look at the, the gore riders. Oh my god. Let's have a look at these bad boys. There's loads of bits in here. And I've noticed as well that some of the parts don't fit together very um very well. A bit on the bores, I'll show you on these in a second, if I can get into it that is. The world's sharpest nail scissors. Um, right, so, sorry, not the camera. So we've got all these bits here. Blimey, okay. Let's try and find two halves that go together. So you've got these two here. Um, when you put it together, you've got this gap. I don't know how well you can see that. There's a bit of a gap there, but I suppose it's made out of this weird material, so can you use normal plastic glue on it or go super glue it or what or is that plastic? I don't know. I wonder why it's not on a sprue. It's kind of weird. I think I'd prefer if it was on a sprue because that's just been kind of snipped off. Hmm. Strange. I mean, I think the quality's. Sorry, it's so dark. The um, the detail is there on them, and I think it'll come out in the painting. To be honest, there's one of the riders. These skinny little legs. Um. Yeah, I mean they're okay, aren't they? I think. Uh, I'm assuming this bag here's got all the. Yeah, so it's got all the heads in there, it's got the, the arms and the weapons and, and things like that. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, so all your heads and other bits and pieces are all in here in this bag. I'm not gonna tip all those out because I'll be a nightmare, I'll lose them all. Yeah, so they're the, they're they're the the parts that are in the bags. And what we'll do now is have a look at these sprues. Okay then, so within the box there's three different types of sprue. So the first one I'm going to look at then is the, the warrior sprue. Um, so these are the normal orc warriors, which will kind of make up the bulk of your force. Three different bodies. Um, as you can see they've got separate heads, well two of them have separate heads, one, one of them is attached. Um, separate arms uh, with shields and axes. Um, occasional spare weapon there. Um, and then you get the, again these little snotling guys that one there, showing his bum, <laughs> running off. Pretty cool. These little uh, orklings. One's there. It's got a flat, flat back, so you stick him on the base like he's been flattened and knocked out. Um, if it'll focus. Yeah, uh, yeah. They're pretty, pretty good. Details, definitely there. I'd say it's. Not quite up to the standard of Games Workshop, but it's on a par with stuff like um, the miniatures I've seen for Frostgrave and, and, and stuff like this. Um, but yeah, as you can see, they're not too shabby either, they're, they're pretty good. Uh, and uh, to build up a big army of them, I think they're fine. Um, so that's uh, answered a few of your questions about the quality of the Mantic stuff. I think the kits. Easily good enough. It's pretty good actually. Um, yeah, I'm happy with them. So there's the warriors. Next one then are the the great axe warriors. So two different body designs for these guys. Uh, separate heads again. Separate arms. Um, another one of the little orklings. If you'll focus um, there, uh, and then separate. Um, Big axes, great axes, halberds. I'm going to show the rear of them again. Details pretty good. Uh, yeah, quite cool. And then the last type of sprue then is a command set sprue, I believe. Um, so you've got different type of head, which personally I don't like very much. This weird hat on it. Um, got a drum. Um, the arm holding the drum and the arm with the stick to beat the drum with. Um, another arm there, another arm, spare shield, um, standard, and then another two of these little little dudes. So you got one there sticking his tongue out, full focus. Yeah, another guy, the broken sword. Um, there's the top of that standard. Some kind of some unfortunate head stuck to the top of it. So yeah, so that's all the uh, the plastics in there. And I get like I said, there's twenty of these guys. There's twenty of these guys. Um, and then I've checked on the sprues. I think for the chariot to use these models here. So I just need to cut them off these bases uh, and then stick them onto the uh, the chariots. But again, it would have been nice to have some instructions. I don't know if the newer box sets have any instructions. If I get one, I'll do an unboxing on that and I'll show you and see if the quality is improved or, or changed or, or what's different about them. But um, overall, for the army box set, I think it's uh, pretty good value. And considering I spent 15 quid, it obviously is really good value. But um, paying full price, 50 quid, yeah, pretty good value. Um, I think the models themselves are fine. Um, I'm looking forward to painting them. So, update soon, and thanks very much for watching. Apologies for it being such a long video, but I wanted to show you the book and uh, and the models in a wanna. Uh, so as I say, thanks very much for watching, and bye bye.